everyone. Today we have with us Dr. Payal Ghosh. She has done her B.Tech in Biotechnology from West Bengal University of Technology, Kolkata and did her Masters in Biomedical Engineering from School of Bioscience and Engineering in Kolkata. Later, she did her PhD at Structural Biology and Bioinformatics Division, Indian Institute of Chemical Biology in Kolkata, India. She has worked as a DST inspired faculty at the Department of Biotechnology in Savitribai Phule Pune University. And she has also worked at Center for DNA Fingerprinting and, and Diagnostics at Hyderabad and National Center for Cell Science in Pune. We are honored to have you here, ma'am. Thank you. And I must congratulate both of you for taking up such a good initiative. It will inspire many students across the world. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. So, ma'am, uh, we would like to start by knowing uh, how are you and how uh, work from home is treating you? Okay, so I'm fine. I'm doing good. Yes, so, uh, you know, um, because of this pandemic situation, uh, we uh, we we were in. I mean, uh, we uh, didn't come to our university uh, for some for a couple of months. But since uh, July, we are coming to university. Initially, we used to come like twice or thrice in a week. But now, like uh, since last month, we are coming almost every day. But definitely, the students are not coming. So. Uh, we need to take the, we need to conduct the lectures online. Okay. Yeah. So like, uh, I must say that online teaching uh, is a little difficult for both the students and teachers uh, because uh, many a time, uh, even a student wants to ask something because of the connectivity issues, they cannot interact. And, uh, and same here for us. So we cannot see the face of the student. So eye contact is very important. Um, and we don't see the expression of the student like we can see in the, in the classroom lecture. But definitely life uh, must go on. And, uh, and that, I mean, the way we, are, uh, we can help the students, we are trying. We are trying to innovate new ideas new types of assignments we are giving to the students so that it becomes interesting for them. And uh, I hope we will meet soon. Uh, you know, we will um, go back to our previous classroom teaching maybe next semester onwards. Yes, ma'am. So ma'am, we would like to know more about your educational journey. Okay, so uh, I'm from Kolkata. West Bengal and uh, yes, I have a very nice, a joyous memory of my childhood. Um, so in school, uh, you know, the school was very close to our uh, place, the apartment where we used to live. And um, during my school times, I remember uh, I had some fascination in science and uh, I used to you know, I was inquisitive and I used to, uh, you know, uh, ask, I used to make friends, uh, groups of friends, and we used to discuss about science. We, I used to participate in many extracurricular activities uh, since my childhood, since, since my school days. Okay, so there also I used to bring up the topics of science and uh, different things which are happening across the world. And... Uh, after my, you know, uh, after class 12, so that time we had a very, uh, like, uh, a big uh, fascination about this biotech industry, biotech boom, and we all were kind of very, uh, uh, we were unsure about this field, but we want to know, we want to understand that, uh, you know, we, we used to feel that this will have a very bright future. So I took this subject for my graduation. So uh, I, I enrolled in an engineering college uh, for biotech uh, degree. And there I met several people who actually invite the interest of research in this field, in biotechnology and in bioinformatics or computational biology. So in engineering college, there was 
I mean, after uh, the final semester, most of the students used to go for jobs, you know. Um, but because we were from a different discipline and because of our professors, okay, we had a very, uh, I mean, we had a very, um, what should I say, it's a passion for higher studies or research. So that's why we went for the master's degree and then later on we, I kind of felt that probably uh, academic is the place where I should, uh, you know, uh, I should uh, continue. So I did my PhD and then later on, uh, finally I <laughs> come to this particular industry I'm teaching. Okay, and here I'm enjoying both research and teaching. So it's kind of a very nice journey for me since my childhood. Yes, ma'am. It is a very uh, interesting journey. And uh, what's important is that we love our job, what we are doing. Right. You can see that from your job. Yes. So, ma'am, uh, can you tell us more about your current work? Yeah. So, so uh, as I told you, so I have a very, uh, when you introduced me, then also you people have mentioned that I have a very diverse background. I did my BTEC in biotechnology, and then I did my master's in biomedical engineering, which is, uh, which is a kind of a very different than what we understand, what we know in biotechnology, what we study in biotechnology. And later on, I did my PhD in computational biology. So it's completely mixed bag. Uh, for me and that I'm still continuing. Okay, so here I have a uh, few projects which are very different from uh, each other. Uh, so when a student come to me and uh, ask me about my, you know, um, profile or the research topics, I say that I have several things to tell you but you first tell me your interest. So, for example, I have uh, some project which is very much related to genomics. Okay, because my DST Inspire project is related to genomics, where I tried to study uh, some set of proteins which are called as nucleoid associated proteins, which helps in genome organization in bacteria, right? So, uh, and I also try to understand the role of those proteins in gene expression. So how do they, uh, you know, help in adapting stress for the bacteria? So this kind of questions I ask in my, um, in my research um, project. Uh, so uh, that project is still there in my lab and one or two students are doing uh, some work on it. But, uh, the topic that I, uh, um, in which I did my PhD, that is a structural bioinformatics or uh, it's computer, computer aided drug design. That also I do many a time uh, for screening of small molecules for a particular disease uh, in, in bacteria or, or in different pathogens. And apart from that, one of my PhD students is working on a very interesting bacteria. It's called Dinococcus radiodurans, which has a capability of, uh, of, of uh, you know, adapting a very high radioactive stress. So we are trying to understand how this bacteria can survive in such, in such uh, adverse condition. So there are several things uh, which we do, but all the questions that I ask, I try to answer them uh, from some computational study with some computational modeling uh, through some theoretical uh, aspects. So right now I have kind of uh, moved from the experimental work and I mostly uh, conduct my research topic uh, to uh, address my research topic with computational biology, with different tools of computational biology. Yes. So ma'am, uh, we would like to know, like uh, your work is in core bioinformatics uh, sector and it is totally dry lab. So uh, how much necessary are the coding languages, the programming languages we learn uh, in bioinformatics? Uh, so that's always the confusion for us. Yeah, so it is very important. So I must say 
and uh, that uh, there are uh, students who loves coding right so for them uh, you know they can uh, consider a career where they can develop a new algorithm or new tool okay so in bioinformatics we rely on different tools and also we uh, we can use some existing tool tools okay to get our answers but if a student who doesn't uh, if a student doesn't like coding or doesn't understand or cannot uh, you know um, do not have passion for coding then i must say that uh, for them they can ask different types of questions for which they they need not to do the coding uh, on herself or himself but they can use some existing code to answer the questions okay so it's not necessary that if you want to be uh, you want to pursue a career in computational biology or bioinformatics you have to learn code but if you if you know the coding app, but if you know the basics of coding you will understand how to run a particular tool or particular uh, program it will be easier for you otherwise you have to you know you have to collaborate with someone who can understand this and uh, help you in that particular aspect so i always ask all my students to learn the code even they don't like it but uh, later on they can decide that whether they will uh, basically use their coding uh, you know uh, language for developing a tool or they will use some existing tool even for using the tools that are there in market they need to know one need to know a little bit about the how the uh, you know how, how a program works how can we twist a pro program to make it more efficient this kind of thing yeah so ma'am next we would like to uh, know that uh, during educational journey uh, what were the challenges that you faced and were there any specific challenges that you have faced as a woman and you don't think that you would have faced it if you were a man okay so see i mean uh, i must say that uh, when you try to secure a position which you really like where you have your passion is always challenging just think about a, a a child who loves painting and who wants to be a painter uh, i mean a professional painter okay so then you will see that there are a lot of challenges there are so many you know um, things that uh, he or she has to um, you know um, face while establishing himself or herself as a painter as a professional painter so as i told you since my childhood i had a passion for teaching i mean teaching and some research i was inquisitive i used to do you know simple experiment at home when i was studying uh, botany i was studying different parts of flower i used to pick up flowers from my garden and i used to show all my family members that these are the different parts of a flower and these are the roles of these different parts to my younger sister so always i mean the teacher student meme was my favorite past time uh, so always i used to make my different uh, you know uh, other friends as students and i used to become a teacher and i used to order something i used to ask give assignment give task so this kind of thing was there so probably since my childhood i had a um, passion of being a teacher and also a scientist and i'm really lucky that i could pursue my career in in this particular in, in as a teacher and scientist so yes uh, i faced few things few i mean what you can say challenge like uh, because of some because of our existing system uh, for example you probably have seen that uh, there are a huge scarcity of teachers uh, in all indian universities and uh, this is uh, this particular problem uh is has started from a uh, maybe from a, it has got a political root also i mean so we don't know the reason that why the post are not getting advertised and why uh, there is not regular post coming up uh, so that's why we we had a long journey 
we had to, we all have to make a long journey to get a position to secure a position we had to get our own project like for me i had my own project and then i could enter to this system but uh, and i have seen some of my friends uh, who are of my age who are still you know struggling to get a position so this problem is there uh, you know and when you say that i really want to pursue my career in academics uh, then definitely you need to face this kind of challenges but i should not say that this challenge is more or less for uh, a man and a woman uh, definitely you know when you have a family a kids elderly parents your i mean as a as a woman you have probably get greater responsibilities at your home that is very much true and for that many a time i have seen that uh, people have uh, um, people have shifted their focus huh. so i have seen that uh, my friends uh, my female friends who have relocated uh, with the posting of their husbands right uh, with a uh, family and so they they have kind of completely shifted their field mm, they are probably now doing some jobs in banks or teaching in schools so uh, yes i i should say that this kind of problem um, i mean people face this kind of issues uh, but uh, fortunately uh, me and my husband both are uh, in a same city and i could get a job of my own choice in the city where we are staying so i should i must say that i'm fortunate in this particular case but there are people who who face this uh, i mean and this is very frequent this is still prevalent in in, in our society yes even though we uh, don't come across uh, such cases but we hear regularly about uh, sexism at work and how women have to leave jo their jobs for uh, working uh, at home for making things work between the family so uh, ma'am what according to you uh, can be some of solutions to fix this uh, problem like yes so like uh, the first thing i uh, according to me is that one should speak up right one should uh, one should uh, like discuss their his or her problems uh, with the with the colleagues or with all the faculty members of their of their institute or of their uh, departments so communication is one important um, uh, solutions i i must say that one should communicate one should discuss that uh, this kind of words or this kind of decision actually is is very difficult for uh, for a person to you know face or this this gives me uh, you know mental uh, issues i must i mean one should discuss it with the hod or head of the department and in front of all the colleagues uh, so even after this so this is kind of soft management man should discuss man should clear the misunderstanding it may happen that one may have um, said something uh, without really thinking about a wrong uh, you know uh, without really meaning what one has probably interpreted so uh, first one should clear this misunderstanding if there any but if the problem persists one should really take it up so nowadays uh, i think in most institutes there are law cell there are women cell okay one can go and discuss uh, with the law officer with the women cell representative that uh, this kind of issues i am facing at my center at my at my place and according to me i think this is something uh, which is uh, not expected and uh, one should take uh, i mean they should take appropriate step against it i mean uh, no one should really digest or no, no one should really um, you know um, uh, take it granted uh, yes now we know everything at, uh, the, there are many news about the sexism in different places not only in academics in all uh, in all the offices 
we have we have heard this kind of issues so one should really uh, take it very seriously uh, one should not uh, uh, you know sit it sit it sit with it yes ma'am we also believe that it is very important to uh, discuss with your uh, head of your department or uh, right. anyone that right. you are facing you know uh, many a time i mean i must i should not say that uh, discussing with one person will help so sometime discussing with all the peers all the colleagues uh, will is is necessary okay so many a time uh, you know discussing with a single person uh, may not give you a proper idea that what you should do it it has to be a group activity you, you should you should uh, if you discuss with uh, everyone you should uh, make this kind of events public i mean one everyone should know that this kind of things happen and this is not correct yeah so this uh, this needs to be done hmm. it's very important to speak out uh, we should right. not suffer in uh, silence yes, so ma'am uh, what message you, would you like to give to young girls who are uh, trying to uh, work in your field or aspire to work in your field and uh, battling sexism uh okay so i will not restrict it to the girls only i must say this message is for all my students uh, who are watching this so yes if you have interest in computational biology so this is really an emerging field where one can ask um you know uh, many many different types of questions so nowadays uh, one should one can really uh, see that how computational biology will help um, your uh, you know to address your science questions you know it can be any science questions you can make a model you can make a prediction and then you can validate it with your experiment so even for a student uh, who ha who has a, a basic training in experimental biology he or she can also consider this field as their uh, you know prospect uh, as their prospective research area okay so uh, one need not to have a uh, strictly uh, you know training in computational or bio bioinformatics per se uh, and uh, yes uh, as i told you that communication is very important so whenever you feel that you are getting treated differently you are getting treated otherwise which is not expected you should always discuss it with your friend peers to understand that whether it is really wrong or i mean you can really um, what i say you can really adjust it in some other way okay you should discuss with your professors with your peers and if you if the problem persists you should really take it up to like a higher level like i say to men you can go to the women cell or the law officers to get justice but uh, you should not really uh, you know um, you, you should not adjust it all the time uh, just thinking about your career so your career is important that everyone will understand Uh, but you should also uh, think about all the social issues so whatever problem you are facing you should clear the path for your future uh, you know colleagues or future peers and that he or she should not face the same problem next year when he or she will come to your position so that's our social responsibility i believe uh, we all should really uh, think it very seriously Um, and uh, really consider it um, for their uh, for their rest of life and always uh, everyone should stick to the academic ethics and uh, stay true to yourself all the time that is very important um, so if you are if you are uh, trying to pursue your career in academics so you should always stick to the ethics uh, academic ethics and uh, you should always true to yourself that will help you um, to be a successful uh, you know um, academicians 
in future. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we believe it is a. Uh, it should be both ways. Like if someone approaches us and tells us that they are facing such problems, so we should uh, take out time and at least look into it and try to help that person uh, in a very uh, genuine way. Yes. Yes. Correct. Yes, ma'am. So uh, we would like to thank you, ma'am, for your time. It was lovely speaking with you. So and uh, we. Uh, this was our first interview with a computational biologist, so we came to know a lot about a very new field. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.